Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, on today's episode, we're going to be covering something very entry level. Now, recently on the channel, I've been covering some rather interesting things, and not to say this isn't interesting, but we're going back to the other end of the spectrum, and we're going back to those kind of really affordable, dare I say, cheap whiskies, and seeing what we've got in the Glen Murray Elgin Classic. Now, this is the start of their range. They do lots and lots of other things, including kind of cask finishes and age statements and all sorts. But if you go into, especially in the UK, almost any supermarket and uh, absolutely anywhere that sells whiskey, they've probably got a bottle of this or something similar to it in range on the shelf. Now, this thing is really quite cheap. And I used that earlier in inverted commas because I don't want to make that sound like it's uh, like on the, like the super cheap end of the spectrum is just like really affordable. I have to say, really affordable. Generally speaking, this is going to sell for about sort of twenty two, twenty three pounds in the UK. Very often, you'll find it about twenty pounds, so like on a, just a regular price point. Sometimes you'll find it even lower than that on a special kind of you know yellow ticket deal or something like that. I think I paid like eighteen pounds for this in the Tesco supermarket fairly recently. And um, I hadn't covered it on the channel before, so I thought, why not? You know, uh, I'm actually a, a big fan of Glen Murray. I just don't seem to pick them up that often these days. And I don't seem to cover them on the channel. That's changed now, and hopefully I'm going to cover a few more of theirs in the future. But yeah, in any case, this is um, something that, that there's a lot of figures on this that kind of really would put off the discerning whiskey drinker. Stuff like 40%. Uh, these ones here, I've got the word from the distillery themselves that if it's 40%, and uh, especially the no age statement ones, they're all chill filtered and added colour. So they're all things that typically mean that it's kind of a lack of quality to us, although as you're about to find out, that's usually a little bit unfair. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it is quite hard to tell these days, I do have to say. So that's why people like myself and the other people that are doing whiskey tube channels are uh, people to be listened to because we can tell you what it is and what it isn't. And that's probably fair enough to say. Now, although, we know it's added colour, so you know, we don't know about the age statement on this. This is um, probably fairly youthful because they do have like a few age statements, as I said. I think they're going up to the 10 and 12, that sort of thing. So if it was that sort of age, they'd probably go into that. So I imagine there's a good wedge of sort of three, four-year-old whiskey in that, but I don't know that for a fact, so uh, don't take that on gospel. Um, what I can tell you is that this is aged entirely in ex-bourbon casks. We don't know what level uh, of, of kind of reuse that is, but I imagine because it's so cheap again i imagine it's um you know on that kind of refill spectrum a couple of times in that sort of thing you know i often talk about uh, some of the newer distilleries putting out their kind of standard no age statement whiskies at about 50 quid which is obviously way more than double of this and people sometimes ask how that's even possible i was like well unfortunately they haven't got the stock to back that up whereas a, uh, a rather old distillery like this this was uh, in the late 1800s in 1897 i want to pluck off the top of my head something like that um 1890 something but they've been around for so long you know they've got barrels aging around they've got stock that they can build stuff like this fairly cheaply and, you know they've built they've bought that barrel once already you know many years ago that's gone through let's say you do a 10 year cycle the first one you know when you buy the barrel that's when the expense happens you fill it you leave it sitting for 10 years you empty it out you bottle it whatever then you use that cask again well that's not costing you any more money you've already spent that you know it's just the time in the warehouse and things like that so the barrel doesn't owe you anything they can just keep using it and using it and using it until it has got nothing left to give going a bit off the rafters but that's kind of my point my point about how a distillery can make something as affordable as this and still have it taste good as we're about to find out, let's get on the nose and see what we've got. Now, there'll be no surprises here uh, for a, um, a kind of, like, let's say, a simply made uh, ex bourbon cask. It does have a lovely fruity nose on it, but it's mostly the kind of vanillas, the honeys. For me, there's a lot of maltiness that goes on with it and some kind of lemon hints, some citrusy hints on the back end. Not a bad nose at all, actually. Not a bad nose at all. Quite like it, actually. Let's try on the palate. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the initial sensation, the mouth feel fairly thin, as you might expect from a kind of 40% whiskey. That's overtaken very quickly by some of the nose characters. A lot of that translates over those kind of vanillas, the honeys, that sort of thing. Not getting any kind of citrusy on the, on the palate, but 
it was really faint on the nose, so it's been overwhelmed by the next tasting note, which was a whole heap of kind of white pepper spice. Sometimes talk about peppery spice, and I try to say the difference between kind of cracked black pepper and the, the you know powdered white pepper. It's a very distinctive, different kind of spiciness, and it's airing on the side of the white pepper for me on this occasion. I have another sip. Hmm. The finish is fairly short to medium. It's you know it's not overly short, mostly spice led. And it does thin out towards the back end, again, as you might expect. Now, as you can probably tell, um, I'm not being overly negative about this because it, it, you shouldn't be overly negative about this. It's um, not a, a whiskey that will light uh, anyone's world on fire. It's very good for its price point, And that's really the key takeaway from this video and something I'm keen to impress on everyone who's watching this, hopefully, because that's really the most important part to this. It's uh, an excellent whiskey for its price category, especially when it's like the super cheap end of that. It does often make me wonder how anyone's making money off of this thing, because the, the margins on this must be like way for thin. But that's the whiskey world, you know. And this knows its place. For me, as I've mentioned many, many times on the channel, one of my favourite coined terms is guard whiskey. This is definitely one of those things. This is something that's so cheap, but the quality is still there that you can plonk this on your cupboard in front of the stuff that's uh, more expensive or rarer or whatever, something you don't want to touch so often. I always say for me, I have a, an IKEA Kallax cube system at home. So um, the, the expensive stuff gets buried like five layers deep in the back of that and it's a real pain to get hold of some of that stuff if you're if you fancy a drama like that you have to get all the rest of it out uh, so i tend to put the good stuff at the back and the uh, less expensive stuff like this in front of it so that when i fancy a drama and i'm not really sure what i want i'm just going for a rummage i do tend to go for the stuff at the front first so there you go the guard whiskey uh, hopefully people are starting to catch on to that because i know that it's a good thing that a lot of people like to do and this is exactly that, you know, you can drink this with impunity, you can have uh, as much or as little as you like, you can replace it as often as you'd like, it's not going to break the bank. And for me, it's just an all-round good whiskey for the price. Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on to... Uh, ooh, always the start. <clears throat> Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. 